afternoon to all the participants uh, from India and Taiwan. Uh, I want to uh, begin by thanking uh, our dear friend uh, Toby for making this uh, possible. And I will be very sure uh, today, uh, this is will be perhaps uh, the first in the series of uh, this uh, uh, technological discussion. And uh, we this time uh, focusing on uh, semiconductor. And I, I think uh, we have uh, some leading uh, experts, even if uh, they are not uh, showing uh, on, uh, on, on this. Uh, we only have a, a few people speaking this time. But uh, the idea, as uh, uh, Toby and I discussed, we want to get to know and also make ourselves uh, known by or uh, each other's. Um, I, I do hope that in the next uh, hour also, uh, our Indian friends, experts, will be able to introduce a little bit of uh, yourself uh, so that we, we will get to know you more. And of course, I also hope that uh, you, you can listen carefully to our experts. Uh, we do not have that many. And I, I can tell this is a, a really timely issue. Uh, not just uh, for semiconductor industry itself, but also garnered by U.S.-China strategic competition. Currently, uh, this has been at the center of uh, everything. So I'm so delighted that uh, we will be able to run this together with uh, Synergia Foundation. And I, I promise that this will be the beginning of our joint effort. So uh, I look forward to hearing uh, comments uh, from all of you, but of course today would be uh, all the presentation will be limited uh, to only six minutes, and I will leave this uh, to Toby. Toby, why don't you uh, introduce and open up? So good, uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and uh, thank you so much. Without taking much time. The purpose, and I will summarize it in one sentence, is to is an attempt to do a brick by brick building of uh, what we think could be a, a larger collaboration in the fab semiconductor industry. So we're not going one shot to the end. We're trying to see where we can find complementarities in supply chain, in raw material, uh, in technology, and, and, and then see how it will grow because there has to be comfort at both ends. So we'll try to navigate it, and that's the whole idea. So uh, uh, if I if uh, uh, if I could take the liberty and uh, request uh, Dr. Naik, uh, he had recently outlined uh, the the sort of uh, framework for the uh, uh, semiconductor industry. Maybe Dr. Naik, you could probably give us a, a sort of a, a, a definition of what you are thinking about. Okay, thank you, Toby. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen from uh, India and abroad. Uh, I would like to introduce myself as uh, Dr. Nayak, as I told earlier, the former Director General of uh, DRDO, Defense Research and uh, Development Organization. Uh, I have dabbled in microtronics for last about uh, 40 years and uh, superannuated for three years back. Uh, from that angle, I am the oldest member from the Indian side. I think I'll try to give perspective of what is the uh, Indian semiconductor industry has been. Uh, so far, uh, in the manufacturing of this, or the fab, what you call in semiconductors, is we are not done that uh, very good, but we have some strength in that. Uh, to tell our Taiwanese friends, uh, I'd like to say that Right now, we have about uh, three fabs in India. Uh, one is in uh, Chandigarh called SEL, Semiconductor Complex Limited. And one is in uh, Bangalore called SITAR, Silicon Technology and Applied Research. And one is in Hyderabad called GATE. Uh, SEL works on semiconductors basically for uh, uh, ASICs and uh, you know, basic uh, silicon technology. 
and Sita works on MEMS and uh, GATEX works on compound semiconductor devices and related technology and research. So these are the three fabs uh, way back. Uh, we started in manufacturing somewhere in uh, early 80s till now we are done. But uh, we have a good ecosystem for design. What I'll say, what are our strengths and weaknesses? A weakness, as I told in the beginning, we don't have a state of art facts. That's true. And we are trying to acquire and, and at, at our strength. Strength wise, we say that uh, VLSI designs, uh, we have a very good strength. And uh, even most of the MNCs like Intel, IBM, and all things have a huge uh, design houses in India. And even TI and all, you name uh, anybody, they are there in India. And uh, they have a large presence, and all Indians are working for them. And I would like to uh, tell these uh, friends from abroad that first uh, 65 nanometer chip, chip backend was done from India. Even for Intel, the backend for about the first billion transistor chip was done from India and Bangalore. And uh, there are other things, various things. I think uh, a friend from IESA will tell what our strength in VLSI design. That's the one. Uh -huh. Very good thing there. Second one is what I told you is that <clears throat> we are the fastest growing uh, economy, and you are saying that uh, on the, I mean, particularly on the internet side and all things, digital economy, we are the fastest growing, and uh, our um, uh, demography is fantastically for digital world. We have about 65% uh, um, people below 30, 35. That means out of the 1.3 billion people, you can imagine what's the digital, you know, aspiring uh, population we have. And uh, hence, we are the fastest growing internet and even mobile technology users in India. That means what? That gives a very good uh, market for semiconductors in India. In fact, we say that uh, by 2030, our uh, uh, a semiconductor market will be somewhere like $410 billion, more than the oil bill. So that's the perspective I'm saying, uh, market plus the design capacity. And uh, as far as the manufacturing uh, ecosystem is concerned, there were some concerns earlier because I had about, uh, as Toby was telling, about a uh, month back, I had one discussion with uh, uh, Perspect Foundation from Taiwan, and we had a discussion on these uh, aspects. They were having some constraint that whether India has a you know uh, ecosystem for fabs like water, electricity, land, and all those. So those things are you know not there. You no know, issues at all. In fact, that day I told them we have at least five places readily available: land, water, and electricity. Because they were telling some concerns of electricity earlier, it was 2,700, 2,007 case. But I said that is a lot of difference now. We don't have any problem of electricity, water, and other things. As far as the other uh, manufacturing is, is a proactive government policies. In fact, our government has already said that anybody chip manufacturer would like to come to India, we are offering a one billion dollar uh, as an incentive apart from the other governmental uh, advantages, okay? And we can give uh, even the market availability and all things if it is manufactured in India. So there are a lot of incentives if you do it in India. From that angle, we are, uh, you know, what you are kind of welcoming anybody, semiconductor industry is coming. That's why I'm telling this particularly is because our friends from Taiwan has a manufacturing strength we know. As we know that TSMC has got 56% of the global market, in semiconductor and they are the leading in high technology even in fact three mega you know three nanometers and uh, they are trying to get it by 2023 and two nanometers you know a lot of investments happening so it is a if we work together that's what our intention is that there is a win-win situation for both we can bring it in what is uh, our market strength and design and a proactive government policies and uh, you bring it in the technology. And we, in fact, we have already asked for a global tender for uh, having expression of interest on the 14 to 28 nanometer range. Uh, why particularly 14 to 28 nanometer? Because we still have to uh, get it used to the lower than that technologies. And we feel that that's economically, uh, that's the most optimum solution right now for India. Okay, from that angle, we expect that at least from, from uh, 
our friends from Taiwan can take this opportunity and uh, we can work together. So that's one thing I would like to bring it to the table. And uh, I hope uh, from our friend from IESA and other friends are there who will bring in the Indian situation. If any more details are required, I'm ready to give it to you. Thank you. Professor Lu, why don't you uh, uh, decide who will uh, be the front runner from, from the Taiwanese side? <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me now uh, invite uh, the key person, Dr. Dennis Wu, our current the director of uh, Taipei Computer Association, and he represents a number of uh, associations. Um, I know this is a beginning of uh, our conversation, so I would just uh, encourage uh, every one of us uh, to speak uh, concisely, and we will have uh, another, uh, another time. To, to do uh, more focused uh, discussion. So, uh, Dr. Dennis Wu, please uh, take the floor. Yeah, good afternoon to our dear friend from India. Uh, I guess why I should share some information before uh, our discussion about uh, how to cooperate in the future. I think uh, semiconductor industry to Taiwan is a very important industry. I think, uh, as you may know that. Uh, but right now, due to the pandemic, there's some uh, impact and uh, some uh, uh, influence about the market and uh, some uh, supply chain. I think in the last years, it's a, a bit uh, tough. But I think uh, now in this year, right now, what we look is the future is very positive. Uh, the overall the semiconductor industry uh, remain on track to deliver another strong year of growth. As the supply cycle uh, that began at the end of 2019, strengthened this year. Okay, so on the 2020. Okay, so uh, we doesn't expect change much in 2021 about a shortage continuing to impact uh, the the market like the automobile sector and uh, other industry that rely on all the technology nodes. And uh, this industry will continue to, to, to struggle and rebalance across different industry segments. The investment in capacity now will improve the industry resilience in a few years. So as of uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Nayak, right? Just mentioned that uh, some uh, uh, market potential strengths in India. I think uh, I agree with that. Okay. So, but that's uh, for the to Taiwan is the se uh, semiconductor industry. We are looking for the global increase. Increase. So, I think uh, definitely we will not ignore. I think we will take a very serious uh, about the Indian market because it's a very promising in the future. Uh, so, and uh, right now to the semiconductor industry in, in Taiwan, we look at the Indian market and the India potential, but also we look for the whole global development. So, uh, as you may know that now some of the big companies in the semiconductor industry like Samsung, TSMC and Intel have collectively announced more than 130 billion in spending on new chip foundries. And I think uh, India is very interested about their investment as well, I think. So, and the later opening uh, is fast to outside customers under the Intel foundry service division, like Intel, okay? So, and uh, to SM, uh, TSMC from Taiwan, plans to spend more than 100 billion 
over the next few years to address capacity demand with all at least one foundry already under construction in Arizona. So I think it's the topic. So India, how to attract them for more interest to invest in India. So I think it's a I think it takes some time to explore that uh, because to eat semiconductor industry investment is a very sophisticated topic to talk about that. And uh, as you may know, to semiconductor industry company when they invest in no matter in Arizona, in US, or even in Europe, or in India, or wherever. They will consider some factor. Of course, the land, electricity, water supply is one thing. Certainly, it's a, I think it's an essential factor to those the manufacturer uh, industry. But uh, at the same time, so there are several factors that we are also consider, such as the manpower. Infrastructure, the infrastructure, like what you say, that the land, electricity, water supply, uh, those things, and also facilities, the facilities such as like uh, logistics and uh, some uh, equipment for you know to the semiconductor industry. They got uh, some uh, precision machinery and uh, some uh, tools, so those equipment. And a supporting industry, such as like a petrochemical gas, okay, some uh, chemistry liquid, and high density some uh, uh, chemistry liquid as well, as well as most of the manufacturers will consider about uh, uh, like a market competition. So we, we talk about the market competition. One thing you have to remember is the cost incentive. So to the market, uh, from the market point of view, it's the cost uh, issue, like uh, some of the capex investment, which means a capital expenditure investment, whether it's got a competitive price in the market. So it's the completely from a business point of view. So for those the six factors, those the semiconductor people industry they will consider take into account. So for the ecosystem for manufacturing in India, I think uh, it's uh, got uh, some potential. Like uh, Dr. Uh, Nayak just mentioned that to India you got a strength in a kind of like a BS. Uh, BRSI design. I think it's a very, very good advantage to, to, to India. And then you got a large market, like uh, I think the internet, uh, utility usage at the mobile. I think now India is the second largest or, or largest mobile phone manufacturer, right? So I think it's a very promising in the future. Uh, the topic to India is the how to improve those the six factor but I just mentioned that one. So to attract or to convince it, not only the Taiwanese the semiconductor industry, but also semiconductor uh, rival in Korea, in US, to make the investment in India. So that's what from uh, my, 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 my viewpoint. So I think I, I just stop here, okay? Thank you. Uh, if, if it is somebody from the Indian side, uh, can I ask uh, Rajiv to uh, give his uh, uh, initial thoughts? Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Robbie. I think thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I think it's a great initiative. Um, uh, and um, uh, regarding IESA, IESA is Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association. Uh, is a, with more than 300 members focused with members from semiconductors as well as the ESDM space. I think the figure which KD talked about uh, $420 billion actually started when we came up with the first four together 
uh, and uh, that's where the whole country started focusing on the ESDM space. So while uh, India is focusing, uh, I think uh, Mr. KD already talked about, uh, we today, more than 30% of the global design in semiconductors happens in the country. Say with companies, I think I come from Texas Instruments. Uh, so uh, we are in India since 1985 and it has been a great journey with small kind quality work when we were there in 1985, it started with small bits and pieces of semiconductor design. But then today there's hardly any semiconductor de device which Texas Instruments produces and or manufactures, which is not touched uh, by India. In many cases, even the product definition of uh, the semiconductor device happens out of uh, Bangalore. And um, so everything up to uh, the silicon man uh, fab Everything happens here. Even when the samples come back from the fab, the, the testing and other things um, also happens in the country. So mm -hmm. I think we are in a position where, uh, because of uh, the great strength in semiconductor design, we can easily step up. Uh, besides having a great market, um, the the total, I mean the uh, in-house consumption. Um, I think we we are we are in a better position now. Uh, to basically have our first fab. See so what as IESA we decided while uh, where we are uh, we are the part and parcel of the PLIs and other schemes. What the government of India announced. What we uh, and we are also playing an important role in the expression of interest of which showed close to uh, 20 plus companies uh, participating in the uh, expression of interest for the, having a fab in the country. And we saw a sizable number of people in the specialty fab showing interest. So this time, uh, having learned from the past, uh, um, I think we have been talking about semiconductor for almost a decade now, way back in 2009 it started. But every time there were a lot of teething issues. I think this time the government, um, what they are trying to do is they are not focusing on what they can do, what they are asking semiconductor companies, what do they want for them to, uh, set up the fabrication in the country. So there's a completely different approach this time. And I'm pretty hopeful that this time we will have at least three to four guys who will set up a fabrication in the country. And I'm pretty optimistic about it. While we are doing that, while the government is doing that a, and the industry is doing the, their bit, what we also initiated as IESA is uh, how can India become a a part of the global supply chain, even before having a fab. Um, uh, when I say fab, although we have three fabs in the country, but then when I'm talking about the fab, I'm talking about the high-end commercial fab. Uh, so can India play an important role in that? Uh, and we have initiated this um, uh, approach paper. We are coming out with a white paper in next couple of months uh, and see uh, there are many industry associate industries, whether it is automotive or pharma companies, which if incentivized can actually start supplying raw materials to the FAB or OSAT. I think that will play an important role that can probably give some confidence um, to the government as well as to the industry across the world. Uh, once we uh, actually start uh, supplying uh, these raw materials uh, to uh, to the global, whether it is Asia, whether it is Taiwan, any any part in the world. Uh, so that's where I would like to stop. I don't want to take more time. And uh, um, thank you. I hope I was audible. Very. Good. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Mister uh, Kushu. Uh, can can we now uh, invite uh, the representative? of the uh, Taipei Computer Association in Bangalore office, Mr. Krishnan. Mr. Krishnan, would you like to take the floor? Sure. sure. Thank you. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Premjit and I'm representing the Taipei Computer Association in India. And I'm so thankful to be part of this discussion uh, because uh, there cannot be a time or opportune that now to initiate this kind of a, a round table on a probable collaboration between Taiwan and India on semiconductor manufacturing, uh, mainly because of the, the current supply chain constraints, a resultant of the increased demands spurred by the pandemic. And another is that 
the, the global development is increasingly being dependent on the technology adoption across all sections and regions. All these collectively has created a global demand of semiconductor to about $522 billion in 2021, with a 12.5% year-on-year growth as per IDC. And it also sees a continued strong growth backed by the adoption of newer technologies and demand for data services, so on and so forth. This has brought the limelight uh, onto the foundry market and Taiwan dominates the, uh, the, the, the outsourcing of semiconductor manufacturing market. Its contract manufacturers together accounted for more than 60% of uh, total global foundry revenue last year, uh, according to the, the Taipei-based research firm Trendforce. And much of this has been attributed to one company that is uh, TSMC. I think about 54% of the total foundry revenue has gone to TSMC as per the, uh, the report. The designers and manufacturers are continuously on a, on a, on a quest to make chips smaller and smarter. And TSMC is one among the, the, the foundries capable of manufacturing the most advanced chips. And as Dr. Nayak was mentioning, they're also gearing up for the next gen three nanometer chip. And as per reports, they might start production in 2022. So Taiwan's journey to become the largest semiconductor supplier is a remarkable one. The, the Taiwanese entrepreneurs, majority of whom had their education as well as initial industry experience in foreign countries, deserve the credit for this growth, both in bringing technology into Taiwan as well as in initiating this journey. And not only them, the government also deserves the credit for pursuing unique sets of policies. Uh, at the right time. Uh, these policies not only help to reform the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the capital market in the direction of equities, but also contributing uh, uh, substantial R&D support through the, the Industry Research uh, Technology Research Institute, ITRI. And I sourced from the, the association data that since this journey began about four decades back, the, the Industry has come up to the stage that the, the, the Taiwan semiconductor industry consists of 238 fabulous design companies, 37 packaging and testing companies, uh, 15 fabrication companies, and 11 wafer suppliers, and seven substrate suppliers, three mask makers, and four lead frame companies. This is the ecosystem, and this entire ecosystem is well within a distance of a few hundred miles, as you know that Taiwan is a very small island. And from this number, it's also notable that the Taiwanese industry clustered in a vertically disintegrated infrastructure, where few numbers of companies focus on a particular expertise rather than trying to do everything. And the fact is many of these companies are SMEs, the small and medium enterprises. So the bigger players have to decide on moving to or investing in a new market, and then the suppliers move along. This, this ecosystem is the, the, the beauty, the success, and the current glory of the Taiwanese semiconductor industry. And to the other side, to the flip side, this itself can become, a, 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 I wouldn't say a challenge, but a mere inconvenience for a player within the system as it then need to be highly thoughtful of ROI when moving to a new market, new geography, or a new ecosystem. And since FAB is very complex in terms of both technology as well as commercial operation, it requires large investments, also taking into, into consideration the high level of obsolescence and the great amount of support for business and operational ability. So balancing among the market, investment, infrastructure, and technology will be the key factors. A far off supply chain could uh, make a dent on logistic cost, and hence the option has to be a complete and closer ecosystem. And as was mentioning, like stable and quality power and water supply should be part of the infrastructure planning and a strong and long sustainable policy framework 
uh, would be very critical. And not just the availability of a skilled labor, but also a labor management needs to be planned and uh, 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 structured, especially when uh, operating in geography with uh, different culture. But taking view from an other angle, uh, I think the Taiwanese companies should also be thinking out of the box uh, in a situation like uh, uh, the pandemic, which has not only created opportunities, but also have created situations wherein many countries started thinking about uh, 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 self-reliance, uh, uh, you know, mainly due to uh, the security aspects, both internal at, as well as uh, from outside the country. And the, that, that, that necessitates the companies to be closer to the market. And also the geopolitical situation uh, uh, push these companies to diversify their investments in uh, other geographies. And of course, as many of the speakers was mentioning, like, you know, India is becoming the leader in terms of avail availability of the, the you know, it's, it, it's kind of like a design power. So definitely, uh, I think the, the, the uh, the cost can also be a factor when it's considered to be uh, investing in India. And I feel that all these are achievable if the parties to the act sitting around uh, a table to discuss, decide, and drive this uh, seriously and strongly. And I hope that let this roundtable be a step towards that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so can, we... I, yeah, can I now uh, request... Uh... Uh, professor Kamakoti. Kamakoti is a professor at uh, the Indian Institute of Technology in Madras, and he's also a member of the, the Prime Minister's National Security Advisory Board. Ah, thank you, uh, Toby. Put a lot of things in the correct perspective. Uh, so the uh, thing is that India is uh, certainly, uh, as a consumer base, any activity of manufacturing packaging also. Uh, you are you actually become closest to the market not only that of late we are actually trying to uh, have the, uh, our prime minister has bring out uh, the bring out the notion of atma nirbhata it means self reliance as one of the uh, members actually mentioned uh, there is also a national security angle to that uh, we are going to incentivize indian based design there are uh, policies that are coming up and uh, some are already in place. And that means you will also be closest to the product, right? It's not just closest to the market, but there is also going to be a closer closeness to the product. Uh, so we, you will be seeing a lot more of the system level design, not just the, uh, you know, the chips, but also system level designs being made here. And that essentially encourages you know, uh, setting up of your fabrication facility and also packaging facility. These two are very important. And uh, we are also looking at, if you look at the general market now, uh, I need not tell the Taiwanese about this, but still technology greater than or equal to 90 nanometer are still valid. We have the, electro, we have the complete uh, high voltage domain. We have uh, a lot of things that we could do for the electric vehicles and the solar energy and other systems which are 180 nanometer or above 90 nanometer. So that could also be some joint ventures wherein we bring in these type of technology fabs here by which we quickly, and there is a big market here, there are products here, and there are also the markets, the consumers here. So that is something that, uh, you know, we can quickly ramp up and uh, start as a joint venture. This is also one very important thing. The other thing, since I'm coming from an academic institution, uh, one of the thing would be human resource development. In addition to the natural resources like water, electricity, land, we have a running fab. We have three running fabs, as uh, Dr. Naik mentioned. And uh, so uh, that is not going to be a big deal about uh, the natural resources, and those will be available. The other important resource, of course, is the human resource availability. And there, uh, you know, just uh, one week before we started an Indo-Taiwan relationship, uh, through the uh, uh, the Taipei uh, Center, uh, uh, where uh, you know a private university from South India named Lakra University has signed up an MOU with two universities, the Asian University and Yuan Zhe University, wherein uh, on a yearly basis, 50 students from India will be going to Taiwan, working on the fabs, working on the uh, you know uh, 
on the uh, working with the university on advanced semiconductor manufacturing courses and they will be coming back and we have a good industry support for that so in the human resource building specifically on the fabrication and manufacturing on the semiconductor technology uh, we have made a small step and i am sure it's, uh, this will uh, grow to many more interaction between many Taiwanese universities and Indian universities. So, uh, so uh, just to sum up, India has the market. India also will have the product, and uh, uh, the pandemic actually has, uh, and uh, many other reasons, but pandemic in particular has necessitated that you know every company, every product line, every country need to have a redundant supply chain. India can be the next destination for Taiwan. And we are also looking at, uh, you know, fabs, not necessarily two, three nanometer, but even 90 and above, because that's a good market for it. And then uh, this human resource development, where we have taken some step and we can uh, really pull it up. I think this is, so these are some of the comments that I wanted to make here. And I'm sure this round table will be a big starting point, the, the, the first step towards a very solid collaboration in the most important disruptive technology, the semiconductor technology that is needed. Thank you very much, Toby, for inviting me. You are muted. Uh, Professor, you can, uh, uh, do you would like to ask somebody else or shall I continue? Okay, I, I would suggest that things that we are more concentrating on uh, semiconductor industry for now, and Professor Yao Hongming will be addressing to more geopolitical dimension. And you also have a uh, Professor uh, Mr. Krishna uh, Muthi will be addressing uh, geo strategy. Perhaps uh, we can put them together so that the issue can be more focused. What do you think? At this time. Sure, uh, uh, all of you uh, to greet you on this occasion. Uh, my name is Krishnamurti. I am uh, the CEO of IESA. Just joined uh, that position about uh, three weeks back. And uh, Toby was kind enough to invite me for this uh, uh, event. And uh, I am delighted to be in the midst of uh, all of you. And uh, I, will, I will take only five, six minutes. That's the time allotted for me. And uh, I will try to stay within the time frame because there are others who have to speak. Uh, so I would like to uh, emphasize on the, the most important aspect of uh, semiconductors and the supply chain today and what the world is facing and what it will continue to face the way things are shaping up for the next two years in my assessment, right? So there are four pillars that we need to consider between uh, uh, India and Taiwan. The first pillar, of course, is what uh, Taiwan has achieved in the field of semiconductors, starting from what as a small beginning in the ITRI campus to a global giant that it is in semiconductor manufacturing today. I think, I think that's probably the, the biggest pillar that we need to uh, understand in India, how that was developed, what were the models that were followed, and how it became a global giant today. The, the second pillar, I would consider as uh, India's strength, uh, as a counterpart of uh, Taiwan's manufacturing strength today, is the India's design ecosystem. So when it comes to semiconductor design, uh, probably uh, India's capabilities have been proven to be uh, uh, as good, comparable to some of the best in class in the world, uh, including the Bay Area, both in the semiconductor design as well as the embedded system software. I think India leads the pack comfortably compared to many others. So between design and manufacturing, we have a powerhouse combination here between uh, uh, the Indian semiconductor design uh, ecosystem and uh, Taiwan's manufacturing ecosystem. Now we come to the, the third pillar, uh, which uh, probably we can create, I would say, by a collaboration between the, the Taiwan's uh, associations and the Synergia and IESA, how we, can, how we can join hands. And it is important in my opinion, because today uh, in, in many aspects, we are seeing that the world is moving towards a throttle on the supply chain from a couple of um, entities. And I, I'm sure you understand what I mean. And that will be you know, detrimental to the business globally if we allow that to happen. 
So it's all the more important in the pandemic, uh, post-pandemic world, Taiwan and India join hands to leverage each other's strength in design and manufacturing and become a, a truly global powerhouse when it comes to supply chain of semiconductor products. And if you don't do it, I'm pretty sure very shortly you will see that we are all at the mercy of maybe one or two nations in the world, and that's not going to be good for the industry at all. And I think I think we we have to quickly and cleverly find out ways of getting out of the clutches of that situation. And the fourth pillar I would say is what we can jointly achieve to make that happen in terms of uh, talent development. I mean, we have seen how the 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 talent in both countries have overcome the pandemic in pandemic imposed constraints, but we have come out successfully in terms of keeping the the design and manufacturing successfully going. Now, how can we how can we work together to create more skills, more talent, which is probably one of the pressing needs to increase the capacity? And uh, and where can we increase the capacity? What are the parameters that we need to consider? How can we influence the governments on both sides to make these things happen on the ground? We have been talking about it, but I think I think it's a time for us to come together and really hit the nail on its head and make these things happen on the ground. And I think there cannot be better partner countries than in, in semiconductors other than Taiwan and India. One is design powerhouse, the other a manufacturing powerhouse. And if we if we join hands, I think I think we can do wonders. And as a very simple step, first step, I would strongly recommend can we look at uh, some of the Taiwan entities establishing the outsourced semiconductor assembly and test, what we call the OSAT, or then ATMB, assembly test manufacturing and packaging. Uh, entities. If we can do any one of this successfully in India, then I think I think we would have changed the world the way the world today depends on semiconductor supply chain ecosystem to a completely new paradigm shift that we can create and make it successful. In the next two three years, we should be able to achieve this. And you know, IESA will work assiduously. I promise with the uh, government of India to whatever changes are required in policies, whatever enablers are required to remove the disabilities that we have and make it happen. And I'm sure uh, the, the team in Taiwan side, as well as the other organization in India, like the FICI and all, who are part of this, uh, the, this platform today, we all will work together, the respective governments to come together, and maybe we can, we can uh, write a new success story in the semiconductor supply chain. I will stop here to take any questions. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm slightly in a noisy place, but I hope you are able to hear me well, and I will stop here and take questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps uh, I suggest uh, Professor Yao at this point uh, follows through the Mr. Murthy's uh, uh, remarks and perhaps uh, connect the issue further. Uh, Professor Yao, please. Uh, thank you, Professor Liu, and thank you, uh, Dr. Si um, Toby Simon. Thanks for your kind invitation to the event. Um, I want to share some of my observation regarding the uh, geopolitical competition in the region. Um, try to make things a little bit complicated. That's what I do normally. So we understand you have been engaging uh, with China in an intensified tech competition. And last year, since the U.S. amend its ESPO administration regulation and um, banned the ESPO of the semiconductor uh, technology to China, and this has meant war change their focus to the semiconductor uh, industry. Through the discussion, we understand nowadays we can basically find these microchips or integrated circuits in uh, you know every bit of our human activities from your cars, your fridge, and even your toys. However, most of the conversation has been centered around the uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. And uh, I want to add a bit different touch from this. So, uh, you know, there are three points I want to share with you. Uh, first, we understand that creating microchip is not an easy endeavor and involve a lot of the supporting activities other than the actual manufacturing or you know fabrication. So this includes the silicon materials, uh, fabrication, packaging, testing, supporting material, and gas requires through the whole supply chain. And uh, as from the earlier discussion, we understand currently more than 60% of the microchip in the fabulous manufacturing market are done in Taiwan. And secondly, 
the general strategy we all know is you know try to make your uh, silicon uh, wafer bigger and try to uh, uh, use nano technology to grow more uh, complicated electronic circuit on a given space. So this is the reason nowadays our small tiny handheld device is not growing size but getting more powerful. And a uh, couple of weeks ago, we heard from the news that Intel, Apple, they want to be the first customer of the TSMC's latest three nanometer production technology. However, only high-end smart devices need such powerful computation abilities. And other foundries like UMC, they are also very critical to the modern society, as they may produce the microchip in use in your cars or electricity meters. And 30 uh, semiconductor foundries are capital heavy and technology intensive. It costs about 12 billion for TSMC to build a new foundry in the US. And you also need immense human talent to advance the operation of the facility. So in Taiwan, the most intelligent and smartest guy, they go to semiconductor industry and people not smart like me doing international politics. So this means that for companies that want to invest in this sector, they also need to consider if there would be business feasible and technology competitive in the market. So having said that, most of the semiconductor technology are from the US. And that's the reason that US sanction on the China's SMIC is so devastating. But however, we need to know that Taiwan is still very important in the global semiconductor fabrication. So just, you know, either we see this kind of competition as more like a uh, power driven or like the ideological competition between the US and China. Uh, I want to, you know, highlight that early this year in 2021, Chinese Communist Party passed its 14th five-year plan and uh, it pledged to obtain, as I call, the core position of the innovation in China's overall modernization and have technology self-reliance, zhizhi, and self-improvement, zhiqiang, in order to make China into a technology powerhouse. And in June 2001, China also passed the anti sanction laws in order to resist the U.S. sanction. And from the other side, from the Joe Biden side, it doesn't look like he's going to change the uh, policy legacy from Donald Trump. He imposed further sanctions on uh, Huawei SMICs, and in June 2001, the U.S. Senate also passed the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act to build a more resilient supply chain. It's also reported, um, we heard about, uh, you know, during Trump's time, the Blue Dark Name World now is being elevated and become a new project. It's called the Build Back Better World in the G7 meeting. So all this, you know, I want to uh, uh, conclude it with three implications. So first, Information technology initially was designed with a mandate of the interconnection. And this inherited nature has made the supply chain across the intermingled network. So the US sanction on China's tech firms, including Huawei, ZTE, and SMIC, and make the Taiwan's, Taiwanese company both gaining and suffering. So this is to say that ICT relying on the Indo-Pacific area is yet to encounter more turbulences amid this tech competition. A second, and I also want to remind that global semiconductor supply chain is a delicate endeavor. History tells us that during World War II, Fort Bering's factory was considered as a critical element among Nazi German's military supply chains. Hence, the Allied force focused on bombarding this German asset to start its war effort. And what this means for the uh, semiconductor industry is that the whole semiconductor ecosystem is in East Asia, and um, each of the material, special gas for the production process, fabrication, testing, packaging has taken um, many, many years to evolve. And due to the high specialization of the company in this each step, industry reports already indicate that typical semiconductor production process includes multiple countries, and the product may cross international border over 70 times. This situation has made the semiconductor supply chain very fragile, as there are many potential bottlenecks and that could be created due to any tiny disruption. And finally, this comes to uh, my last point. 
given this ecosystem, I'm not just talking about the land, electricity, or the uh, natural environment. I'm talking about the actual supporting ecosystem. They are all located in the East Asia. And this means that regional security in this region becomes extremely important to the supply chain. In retrospect, if you remember 1996, when China conducted missile drills around Taiwan's trade to signal its political message, the price of the computer components rose substantially that year. And yet, now only a handful of the semiconductor manufacturers are capable of making high quality and extremely compact microcomputer chips. And they are all located in the East Asia. I know some countries, they want to invest substantially, but it will take years before they can realize their investment and have the sufficient technology capabilities. Hence, this means that the regional security of the East Asia is extremely important for the semiconductor supply chain. And the international community need to pay more attention to the regional development. And uh, without occupying too much you know, time, I'll stop here and uh, this conclude my talk and hope to see you guys soon, maybe sometime in Taiwan. Back to you, Professor uh, Liu or uh, Dr. Toby Simon. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think uh, you, know, you have given a, a very different uh, perspective about the East Asian security and the need to keep this area safe as a, as a way forward. So let me now introduce, uh, invite Sumit Verma, uh, Director Strategy of Intel, uh, to share his insights. Uh, thanks, Toby, for inviting me. Just a quick check if my audio is okay. All right. And, you know, good to hear uh, from all of you. Uh, and you know, it, it not only uh, gave me some time to think, but also gave me some time to uh, see what should be the next steps that you know we all can take here. Uh, I represent Intel, and I've been uh, 18 years plus at Intel, so I've been uh, a director at Intel in some way. Uh, in my current role, I'm responsible for external alliances in the Indian ecosystem, especially uh, related to research uh, and growth uh, growth initiatives. What, uh, although I think Intel doesn't need introduction, but you know, since there was a new strategy in place, I thought it's worth uh, reiterating in case you have not, uh, in case you don't know about it. Uh, you know, Intel, uh, since it was founded in 1968, has been an integrated device manufacturer, or we call it IDM. Uh, that means a company that both designs and builds its own semiconductors. Our new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, uh, a few months ago said that we are, and this is what he said, right? We are setting a course for a new era of innovation and product leadership at Intel. And what he means by ID, IDM 2.0 are three main components. First is to continue to build most of our products in-house and expand and expand internal factory network for at scale manufacturing, uh, which means that additional investment will go into fabrications, uh, about $20 billion investment has been uh, already announced in Arizona. We will expand the use of third, pay, third uh, party foundries. We are already using some third party foundries for specific equipments. We'll continue to use that. That provides us with additional flexibility and scale. And third is building a world-class foundry business model uh, uh, services, which Intel has not done uh, to that effectiveness till they just call IFS, uh, Intel Foundry Services, right? So we do plan to engage with technology ecosystem and industry partners to deliver this IDM 2.0 vision. And what I thought would be relevant for today's discussion are three points. Uh, and first is the emerging trends in India and um, recap of you know, what uh, Dr. Nayak and others have also said. Uh, key external and internal factors for corporations like Intel in India and some views of how India could become a global leader in supply chain ecosystem, right? Because right now uh, we have a lot of talent, but from a supply chain, semiconductor supply chain ecosystem, India doesn't uh, rank anywhere close to, you know, in the top 20 or even, uh, so there, there has to be some aspiration that we have to build up in the system. So with that, 
So first part, which is what are the emerging insights uh, that we are seeing from India? First is you know supply chain roles. Uh, although the design houses in India have grown tremendously, the supply chain roles itself, which is kind of supply chain planning, supply chain sourcing, operations and fulfillment, those have increased substantially and those have been moved to India substantially and to some neighboring countries. Second trend is strong design ecosystem, uh, which has been mentioned by Professor Kama, uh, Dr. Naik, uh, uh, and also Rajiv. Essentially, many companies have strong design centers in India. Uh, you, they use ARM uh, and other technologies um, that grows uh, the capabilities for both pre-silicon as well as post-silicon uh, stage, right? So as we know in, in terms of semiconductor designs, right? We have several designs, but pre-fabrication, you have a lot of validations happen in post-fabrication. So I think India ranks really well in terms of you know uh, pre and post third trend that we are seeing is government role and policy incentives you know government is now rolling out uh, schemes to encourage electronics manufacturing and thus you know uh, of creating a vision to see india as hub for manufacturing and assembling activities some uh, major uh, companies are exploring those possibilities we know samsung is uh, leading leading the pack right now tata group is also you know, looking to invest. Uh, I also know about an ISC uh, gallium nitride fab. Uh, Professor Kama may know more de details about it. But idea is because of this incentivization and focus, those those activities are happening in India. Second, uh, moving to the second aspect, which is several uh, internal and external factors. You know, uh, that that enable companies like Intel to revisit its strategy and revisit where their team should be on the global footprint, right? First is, you know, a shift in uh, the whole semiconductor business model, right? There's a huge growth of AI uh, chips, right? Over the next five years, it's expected that 80% of the growth in semiconductor industry would be led through AI-based chips, right? So that's, that's a good indicator. There has been global and regional supply chain opportunities uh, my colleagues in uh, from the Taiwan team just mentioned about the geopolitical conflicts and situation. So there is increasingly location or increasingly locating in-house supply chain roles and setting up supply chain center of excellence. And then India has a role in you know setting up and uh, ensuring how you can influence that semiconductor supply chain. There's a growing customer base in India, uh, suppliers who are developing. Uh, on various technologies, x86, um, uh, risk, etc. And then we look into the supply chain value, uh, supply the value chain of supply chain, right? Uh, I see a lot of people focusing on manufacturing itself, uh, but as my previous speaker told that building semiconductor is not easy, it requires a lot, lot of activities. So if you break up the value chain of supply chain, you have an R core R&D required, uh, step one. Then you have design as step two, which will have IPs, which will have EDAs. Then step three is the core fabrication or manufacturing, which will require wafer technology in which you know, Taiwan leads uh, globally, raw materials uh, that's required. Fourth is assembling, testing, and packaging, and finally distribution. So that whole value chain requirement, now if we take to India, and we look into companies uh, which already has a strong uh, design uh, talent situated. There was this report, and I don't know the number exactly, but if you look into the top design houses in India, uh, top, top design houses of the world that have offices in India, companies like Intel, TI, you know, um, Qualcomm, etc. At least 30% of the global workforce, right, are in India, which is a big. Uh, uh, which is a big deal, right, in some ways. And how, whereas when you look into the supply chain ecosystem uh, in relate to semiconductors, that's not very strong. So there is a mismatch, right? And that's where I think uh, if India has to take a lead and, you know, uh, Taiwan is required, uh, Taiwan for semiconductors is required for the world, right? So definitely India also partnerships that in in India could do with Taiwan would go a long way both ways. Uh, and an interesting uh, model that exists 
is to uh, build up semi supply chain center of excellences uh, that several firms take up and uh, that helps drive improvements across the procurement operations logistics um, and quality based engineering right so what uh, i would uh, suggest is that now if we really are motivated and say that india is set to be in a place where it would be a top global uh, country uh, for semiconductor supply chain what's required uh, what incentives should uh, the industry ask government in addition to what government is already thinking uh, how can industry collaborate uh, in a through associations and through uh, other models uh, how knowledge exchange can happen between uh, like minded countries like india taiwan how the skill set uh, uh, talent could be flourished even more suiting these needs right and a unique model uh, that could result into is creating those multiple center of excellences in india with with focus areas right because it's a big space as we said you know manufacturing is not the only uh, only area though it's very very critical and then create those multiple center of excellences uh, provide them with uh, feed them well and then eventually they will grow uh, and accomplish all what we uh, want to do not only from this team but you know broader uh, national priorities with that i'll pause uh, and oh, back to you toby yeah we have one very distinguished speaker professor r murlidharan from the indian institute of science he was uh, uh, in charge of several top institutes in the country uh, professor murlidharan would you be kind to speak uh, good afternoon are you able to hear me yes we can okay so thank you for giving me an opportunity to, to speak on this occasion and many things have been said about uh, the opportunities in india the strengths of india the weaknesses in india all that and uh, uh, <clears throat> my previous speaker mr sunil i think uh, he from intel mentioned about uh, a project that is been initiated at the indian institute of science i am part of that institute and part of that project i can give you some perspective on that but before that i would like to give give you a brief introduction that i was the with the drdo and professor kd naik was my boss in that organization i was the director of solid state physics laboratory in delhi and then subsequently i was a Uh, and in between i was a ceo of the gallium arsenide technology enabling center which uh, pilot produces gallium arsenide mimics and presently i am with the indian institute of science uh, part of the team which is developing the uh, pilot production process for gallium nitride based chips so many things have been said about the fab and uh, the connotation is fab means a silicon foundry of uh, let us say sub 50 nanometer or sub 100 nanometer uh, gate lengths or feature size but uh, what we uh, at the indian institute of science uh, have uh, i mean started or started to work on is a, a small scale fab which can be which can get multiplied uh, or which can get expanded to a large scale fab is of gallium nitride which is an emerging semiconductor so here is an opportunity for the semiconductor industry in taiwan to uh, collaborate to establish or to forge some relationships with the indian counterparts to not i mean uh, it is not necessary that we should always look at silicon silicon is important and uh, that has been emphasized by many people but in the emerging semiconductors like uh, gallium nitride or silicon carbide which is essential for e vehicle solar and all, all kinds of power converters inverters etc which is and 5g not to mention i mean uh, the most important is the 5g application and these are all emerging so we are not behind we are not uh, there is a huge design capability uh, the recent uh, for example they call as the uh, oron capability open source uh, radio network capability where 
many of the smaller players are trying to design a radio network based on maybe some of them may use gallium nitride, some of them may use gallium arsenide. So there is a 3-5 or a compound semiconductor opportunity for Taiwanese if they want to grab that one in India. And it can become, for example, they could expand. I know they have a capability in Taiwan. In semiconductors is one, I know. And uh, they could expand their base in India and create an opportunity, I mean, or exploit this opportunity and become a world supply uh, center based out of India. So this is an up. And regarding the human resource, I wanted to uh, tell you, I wanted to inform you that there are several, I mean, as a government initiative for the past 15 years, there have been several centers uh, which have a kind of a fab-like facility. It's not a fab, an R&D facilities in which many of the students learn many of the techniques that are used in fab and so, and many of the designs uh, that are useful to fab. And so there's a huge human resource potential which is available in India, which presently goes out of India to get employment, but that if they are given an opportunity to work in India, they would as well grab that. And therefore, there is a huge potential from the point of view of uh, human resources. And uh, uh, here is an opportunity for the Taiwanese counterpart to exploit and expand. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, close my talk. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Professor Murli. There, I think, uh, Professor Liu, uh, would you like to uh, uh, start with some concluding remarks, and then we can give it to back to. Uh, each speaker for a brief one minute, uh, uh, hopefully just to say that okay, this, we would like uh, the discussion to go to stage two. Okay, um, uh, thank you for such a, a great presentation. Uh, it is unusual in this uh, uh, video conference, so we would be able to uh, invite nine speakers all together. Unfortunately, uh, we have not extended too much time as we originally planned. So we might have uh, roughly uh, 20 some minutes uh, for discussion and I'm not making such a conclusion, but perhaps I just pose a, a few questions since uh, speakers uh, from India already introduced and also made such a strong remarks suggesting uh, currently, India and Taiwan, perhaps uh, as a na nature uh, partner for semiconductors. And we have uh, heard and also promote, especially Dr. Dennis Hu, his uh, is association already promoted uh, such a work connecting with Indian industry for uh, almost a decade. And I, th <clears throat> I think so far, there are obviously some difficulties lying ahead for Taiwanese and other industry uh, invest in India. And I, I just uh, thought uh, just a moment ago that uh, with all the advantages India currently uh, has and also Taiwan's uh, advantage uh, combining together, obviously uh, people presented in this uh, uh, meeting hope that we can make it happen as uh, partners. But I, I think perhaps uh, we can later ask uh, our presenters uh, from both sides to ask uh, those uh, negative or challenge uh, for industry to make uh, partners. So I, I think perhaps uh, later I will uh, ask uh, Dr. Dennis Wu in particular, whether in this uh, new era, especially um, in the next uh, couple of years, all of us will be challenged by the COVID-19 in India and also in the region overall. So uh, whether we would come up with a new model uh, partnership to make it happen and, uh, or in another way, uh, I, I do think that uh, there have uh, some uh, cases invested uh, in India uh, ending, ending up with uh, quite negative uh, uh, feeling. Uh, over there. So some of the things perhaps are beyond this uh, technology uh, efforts and development. Uh, most of uh, those things are not uh, 
economic uh, challenge or obstacle for us. Perhaps uh, another governance issue and all others. Um, I, I do hope that in this particular occasion, uh, presenters would be able to share, perhaps uh, not immediately solve all the challenges for, for us, but leading to the future, we can really um, put down the, all those uh, challenges uh, all together and then starting from there, see if uh, we may be able to come up with some possibility. So these are something uh, before we move on to and uh, open open up this uh, floor for all our presenters to ask or to share and hopefully finding the solution. And I, I learned uh, Dr. Dennis, who has uh, confronted with a lot of uh, questions uh, from our industry and also your uh, members of the association uh, frequently ask uh, the similar question to, to you. So would you like to uh, perhaps uh, share and to start with uh, the discussion? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liu. Uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, we have uh, many years to, for cooperation with India for maybe 10 years already. So, from my point of view, I don't see what uh, you mentioned about, uh, we shouldn't say like a negative problem, okay? Not a negative. We should say, how do we improve the uh, cooperation? Not the negative. So, but I think uh, every cooperation, there are some barriers, some uh, constraints. So, the issue is how do we uh, work together to find some solution? So, we have uh, some cooperation in India. In fact, in the last uh, 10 years, it's most about like uh, ICT is in the uh, computer. Uh, most of the computer industry. So we have the, some member already, they have to invest in India, like the Acer, uh, like a recently like a Wistron, and uh, Foxconn, and uh, Pegatron. As in, uh, I think in recent three years, they already uh, invest in India. Talk about the semiconductor industry, perhaps it's a bit uh, different. Maybe we should uh, uh, to talk more about how to improve some, some issue. As I mentioned that uh, some, there are six factors, some uh, semiconductor countries, uh, semiconductor companies, they will considering like, uh, uh, human resources, infrastructure, facilities, supporting industry, and uh, market competition, and uh, some uh, capex investment. So for those uh, factors, so we should both to think about the model. How do we work together in the semiconductor industry? But we talk about the semiconductor industry because uh, please aware that the semiconductor industry includes a lot. It's very sophisticated, not only fabrication, not only the foundry. It's included like uh, the whole semiconductor industry structure. They got uh, like uh, design, research and design, IC design, as you mentioned that, uh, VSI design and the packaging testing, or maybe you can say right now some assembly as well. So it's included a lot of the things we can cooperate in semiconductor industry. From my point of view, it needs to be cooperate step by step, logically and approximately. Such as like uh, Mr. Krishna, um, Krishna Murthy, right? So Mr. Krishna Murthy, just mention that the A, I just know that it's ATMP, you mean that, right? Assembly, testing, and uh, mark, and uh, what do you call it? Package? I guess it's a kind of the uh, 
entry corporation. Maybe we can explore that model. But not uh, not not only like uh, at the beginning, it's uh, from the fabrication this kind uh, corporation because it's involved a lot of the sophisticated production uh, factor. So that, uh, but uh, of course we can go to that. But I mean, uh, if we can take the step by step about the cooperation, I think India got the uh, strength. Especially in design, especially IC design, as uh, Mr. Sumi Verma, right, the director from India, uh, Intel. You just mentioned that a lot of the big company design house in the world they set up their operation in India. I think it's, it's a very, uh, it's a one of the big strengths for India. Explore the semiconductor industry cooperation with Taiwan. We can start from the IC design because I think uh, it uh, will be a very good entry point, especially it's uh, uh, the strength currently in India. So I think it's all of that. It's not 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 the negative factor. I think it should be like a positive factor, so we can improve our cooperation. Uh, as for our organization. We are playing kind of like a platform, a bridge for the communication with the industry in India, with India and Taiwan. Uh, I think I just uh, conclude right now here. Okay, don't want to 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 spend too much time. Okay, we can talk later. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I I wondered uh, any anybody from. Uh, the panels would like to share further. Toby, do you have any further points? Uh, I just wanted to ask Sandeep Arora uh, whether he would like to make uh, 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 an, an intervention. Sandeep, are you there? Yes, yes, yes. I'm here, uh, Toby. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry. Sandeep, uh, sorry. Uh, slightly bad connection at my end today. I mean, audible, Tommy? Hello? Yeah, you're audible. Go ahead. Okay. okay. So I think, uh, uh, you know, thanks, Tommy, uh, for uh, organizing this. This has been a, you know, absolutely, absolutely uh, great, great session. And uh, I think the, the key here, obviously, is that both the countries, uh, you know, need to cooperate. Uh, both the industries from both the countries need to cooperate uh, to a uh, to a large extent, and I think as as the current you know challenges have shown uh, you know across the board that the the supply chain uh, ecosystem is so complex that uh, uh, you know if we don't build redundancies, uh, we are all uh, in for more root shocks going forward. And I think from our side, uh, the Indian industry, uh, the Indian electronics and semiconductor industry. We are absolutely committed uh, to make sure that we work closely with uh, the Taiwan industry uh, and uh, take this dialogue forward and make sure that uh, various aspects of you know components, uh, semiconductor supply chain are looked at uh, in detail. And then we obviously you know, look at what can be done for future proofing our supply chains uh, you know, across the board. Uh, so we are in touch with the government of India also, uh, making sure that uh, they are also aware of the problem and they are engaged with us in terms of uh, finding the right solutions, finding the right backups. And we look forward to absolutely working with all of you in making that uh, happen going forward. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, uh, is there somebody else who would like to sort of uh, 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 provide a, a last minute brief. We have about 10 minutes. Uh, Dr. Nayak, would you like to add something? Yeah, I would like to say uh, a few things. See, whenever we are doing this first success, what's the next thing to be done? So my feeling is uh, we should concentrate one or two things. One is, uh, since we are saying that one area where we can start up is like ATMP, right? So since ATMPs, there are a lot of uh, companies in uh, Taiwan, uh, as I mentioned, SMEs and SMSMEs. 
uh, we should start up at least few industries who would like to come to India, which have a not that uh, they would like to come or they work with India. So if the Taiwanese friends can talk to them out of whatever the industry, they have a lot of industries. And then we can bring our counterparts from India and have a things and they can bring out what they expect out of India. So those things we should start off somewhere, you know, we should move. The second part is in manufacturing. Since we have been telling that we have got a very strong design houses and startups are there, uh, Taiwan is manufacturing like TSMC or UMC. They should be able to give standard cells or US, you know, standard cell libraries to Indian startups. And we can get them manufactured in uh, Taiwan, may not be first manufacturing in India. So what you can do is, you know, at least build a you know, bridge so that Indian companies are designing, getting the rules and all those things. Then uh, Taiwan uh, companies will think that our strength, what is the strength and all those things. It's some matching has to start. You see, we, we need not only keep on talking, uh, something has to move on the ground. Okay, my feeling is that, yes, the fab, if you say it's a complex business, you have to learn. But there are opportunities, as I told in the thing right now from the government side, they can exploit that. Otherwise, if they have some, uh, you know, worries or hesitations of other limitations in India, yes, we have said that in hardware, we have some equipment maintain, maintaining ecosystem is not there. As far as the gas and chemicals, I would like to tell our friends that uh, India is a very strong pharmaceutical industry also where we have got, uh, you know, gas and chemical strength. And I think we should be able to do something better in that sense. But equipment, yes, we have some problems. Even in the maintenance of equipment, we don't have a good ecosystem in India. That's true. So those things have to be bridged. Till then, what you can do is at least start up somewhere. Okay. One is ATMP level, what you can do. And we have ecosystem in India. They have ecosystem how to work together. The second one is the main manufacturing itself. Uh, they should be able to use Indian startups for designing and so that we can know the ecosystem. Then they are the manufacturing in Singapore in the initial stages later, if they feel that very good uh, or you know, things are working fine, they can start, you know, moving some of their, you know, what you call for them. It may be a older fabs like 14, 26 or 45 nanometers. They can start shifting in India. So that we have a supply chain distribution in globally. That's what well, everybody is talking about the supply chain conjunctions and all the things that can be distributed globally. I think somewhere we should start working. We should not only start in the first year and stuck in this first year for a long time. Always engine should, you know, for a smooth running, a car should start changing the gear. So we should not move in the first gear. Start first gear, yes. Second, third gear, we should move. It. That's the high time now. And uh, I feel geopolitical as well as the ecosystem, uh, global situations and supply chain constraint, whatever everybody is feeling now uh, is the right time. I don't think we should uh, lose any time in that. That's my feeling. Thank you. Professor Lou, if somebody would like to speak from your side. Uh, yes, yes uh, I, I see a hand uh, from Danny. Jenny, are you there? You want to uh, ask a question or share something? Yes. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I would like to ask that uh, how does the semiconductor industry from Taiwan can contribute to the SME industries in India? Is there any possibility of such collaboration? Yes, anybody from the panelists uh, would like to respond? Yeah, so one of the, the enabling uh, and Professor Kamakoshi from IIT Madras. So the one of the important things today uh, that we face, right? So uh, is the silicon, see we have a lot of IPs, right? Uh, to actually make those IPs uh, to marketable, we need silicon proof. Uh, one of the thing is that if we could get some uh, good shuttles where uh, we can enable the IP generated by the SMEs uh, to be, uh, you know, manufactured and provide a silicon proof. That would be the biggest contribution as of now that we see. Thank you, sir. Thank you. To 
one question, one question. To, uh, to my Taiwanese friends is, are there any semiconductor companies willing to move to India, even if it is uh, old technology? Are there any companies who will be willing to move to India? And if yes, uh, we can facilitate what they want and we can actually uh, help facilitate that. So is my question. So, Dr. Dr. Hu, can you uh, respond to your members? Uh, how many of them are thinking? <laughs> well, I think, uh, yes, I, I think I should say like that. Uh, I know, I, in fact, the IESA, we have a long time cooperation ever since the Mr. Vidya Shankar and uh, the last chairman is the Dr. Gupta, I think, right? So we have the around eight years already. We have a uh, cooperation with IESA. I know that uh, uh, semiconductor companies uh, in Taiwan, most of them are uh, they got the uh, uh, you know latest technology, the higher technology. In fact, uh, some of the old technology of the semiconductor industry in Taiwan. Not too many companies they 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 still hold up because it's no no market value you know when when you produce the, some products that perhaps it's a price competition is not uh, not uh, variable but they still have some old technology uh, companies semiconductor companies they would like to have some cooperation with India yes I can tell you yes. Uh, in fact, uh, as far as I know, some companies, they have some uh, discussion in India. But uh, I think it's uh, more about, uh, you know, company topic. We cannot uh, discuss too much, too much more here. So I think uh, the answer is yes, some companies, they are exploring the opportunity. Yes. But the, uh, but whether they they will go further, uh, we we will see. We will see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that and also I think I will. Do you feel any of them need any help in India? You know, outside as we work very closely with Invest India, Government of India, the local industry. If any of the companies as they explore partnerships in India, if they think uh, they need any help, you can always reach out to any of us at ISA. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I think we keep our uh, good friendship with IESA very long time. Definitely, we will go to IESA. So next trip, yes, if yes. I go to Bangalore, I will pay you a visit. In Absolutely. fact, I have been, I have no been in your office, your headquarters. <laughs> yes. In fact, I have been uh, in your office before. Look forward to hosting you. <laughs> we are moving from there. We are moving to a much better place now. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So I will pay you a visit in my next trip. I sure. go to India. And also, sure. I think another thing I would like to to raise and maybe some suggest to my Indian friend. Okay. So to Taiwanese the companies, they are very concerned about the government policies consistency. Okay. Consistency. So therefore, I think that it will be one of the factors, and I think it's uh, important factors to Taiwanese companies, not only the semiconductor industry, but also all the companies if they want to invest in, in India. The policies consistency and the policy transparency, and also some of the Maybe you can say some uh, operation consistency that, that you know, the, 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 the procedure. I think it's very important to Taiwanese company. Uh, of course, not only the semiconductor company. Okay. Therefore, and uh, to India, it's a typical case is, is that now in India, you have a, you call it a PLI, I think it's a production linked incentive scheme so i think it's a good incentive good motivation to some of the taiwan companies they start their investment in india for the production manufacturing such as like a withdrawal and the pickup truck even they are not the semiconductor countries uh, co companies 
but uh, they do launch their investment there. So it's uh, some of the government policies, consistency, transparencies, and uh, procedure is uh, you know regu regulation. It's a kind of important factor which Taiwanese company will consider. Yeah, this is my, 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 yeah. So I think what we do is see, well, uh, I think there are some aberrations what happens, but at the same time, the government engages into discussions and finally we are able to find a solution. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so I think many of the policies which have been in place have been targeted to some of our neighboring countries with whom we don't have uh, great relations because of various reasons. But what happens in tackling those, it starts uh, hurting our friendly nations companies as well. So that's where uh, what we do as IESA is work very closely with them and try to navigate and find out a, um, a solution which is acceptable. So what I can assure you, on behalf of Government of India as well as IESA, that we will work out and ensure that there is consistency in the policy, and none of the companies, including Taiwanese or uh, or other companies who are located in India, will not face any issues which will make it difficult for them to work in India or expand in India. Uh, I stop here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think we have already crossed the chair saying uh, that we should bring the specific problems. Say when you talk to a government or anything, uh, generally inconsistencies in what sense? You should get the feedback from the industry, your industry, and come back that will be more productive. So, so that detail, that's what I want. How companies to companies, something reaction may be uh, better, you know, so that, you know, they, what are the problems they are facing? Uh, Maybe that's the best way to go ahead. I think Mr. Krishnan uh, is in, will be in a very, Premjit Krishnan will be in a good position to tell us some of those real issues that are being discussed at your end. Uh, and uh, maybe that could be relayed to, if you feel, to IESA or to us also, so that we are able to keep a little bit of a tab as we, we try to develop this template and uh, see that uh, at least we are able to help in solving a few problems. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't uh, mention most of the things as uh, issues, but I, I would like to mention it as uh, mere inconveniences. And the majority of those things are coming, uh, uh, you know, from a cultural aspect. Uh, because the way in which those companies used to do certain works in a, diff in, a, in, a in a particular culture is completely different when they do that in uh, an Indian market. So I also suggest them in terms of uh, like uh, we have a very uh, proactive government as well as industry associations to uh, take up any valid issues with those right authorities. And also, uh, you know, my suggestion to them would be like, uh, uh, you know, there are ways of doing it. Like if I don't know how to do a particular activity in a different geography, then find out a person who can do it in a right way in that particular geography. So the joint ventures and collaboration with the right, uh, uh, you know, uh, supporting ecosystem or a supporting players uh, is, uh, you know, I always used to uh, suggest those companies, but again, like that's what even in my initial reference, I I mentioned like the companies have to think out of their box. So it's not just okay, I'm comfortable in doing the business in th this way, but when I move to a new geography, uh, it might not be the same way that I used to do the business, but it might be in a different uh, way. And there, I need more collaboration. There, I need more. Uh, you know, uh, holding hands in that particular geography and, of course, blessings and uh, support from the authorities like the, uh, you know, the government and other uh, regulators. So I think uh, most of the things are, and we, you know, even though the Taiwan companies uh, raise some of those things, we try to, we try to make them understand like 
you know, how things can be uh, worked out in India in collaboration with most of these associations. That's what Dennis was mentioning about the, the MOU that we signed with IESA and some of the other Indian associations as well. I think we are well past the three o'clock. We are about six minutes. Uh, 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 we have exceeded. So I think uh, I will leave it to Liu to conclude. And I just want to thank all of you for sharing your very, very valuable insights. We will, we will sort of paraphrase it, uh, put it into some sort of a report, share it with you so that we can prepare for a round two. Sounds good. Well, thanks all. Thank you very much, uh, Toby. Uh, I think uh, today's uh, discussion is uh, very important, opening up uh, a number of uh, specific area. Uh, in the past, there are a number of uh, Taiwanese company already uh, operate in India. But uh, as uh, all of you mentioned, we are now talking about uh, not just uh, one investment uh, area. You also mentioned uh, design, manufacturing, and also uh, technological cooperation. So in this uh, new era, perhaps uh, we need to see a complex or combination of uh, joint effort, not just a uh, company by company. Uh, Dr. Hu also mentioned policy consistency is a challenge for Taiwanese uh, industry. There may be also legal issue, but now, uh, on top of uh, all these uh, technological uh, effort, we also have a new issue, strategic, uh, geostrategic issue come to play. So perhaps uh, this is the reason why uh, Synergia Foundation works closely with Taiwan Center for Security Studies. We want to also collaborate with industrial sectors. Combining together, we can see all the question and challenge to all of us. And I think uh, Toby and I would, uh, based on whatever we discussed uh, today, move on the next step. And uh, we do hope that in due course, very soon, we will come back focusing on specific area for further elaboration. And I think today's uh, discussion is uh, uh, important for all of us, and especially uh, sharing your knowledge and also your uh, encouragement. So I, I'm pretty sure that uh, we will come up with uh, the next one, uh, focusing on various uh, uh, important uh, issue. And I thank you uh, for participating in this uh, discussion. At least uh, through the discussion uh, from Taiwan, we can identify uh, experts and also companies that you represented um, with this name and also institution. We hope that we can link up with you and walk uh, further. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Toby for inviting uh, great friends uh, from your side. And we also like to thank uh, all participants spending time with us. If you have uh, any further uh, information, uh, please uh, send by email to us. And later on, Toby and I will work on whatever we discuss, uh, wrap up uh, with clear conclusion, share with everyone. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you.